Hume football, the excitement of the last home and around uh, matches to be played. Phil Buffler is with us. How are you, Phil? Well, thanks, Wayne. Sunny day in the Riverina today, so... Uh... Just waiting for my uh, spray plane to turn up and spray a bit of canola for me. Oh, beautiful golden canola. They'll be celebrating that around football grounds at Hume this weekend. But I tell you what, if they weren't so excited about the footy, they could always go and fly some pigeons, Phil. And apparently there's a big pigeon race going on, which we, we might talk about after some footy. Don't start me on the pigeons, Wayne. I won't have time for football. So, no, not really. But, um, <laughs> Yes, there's a big pitch race in South Australia and the Northern Territory today, but we'll talk about that later. All right. And, of course, Rand were once called the Pigeons too, weren't they? The uh, side that now, of course, is the Giants, part of the Giants. But uh, that's a great um, the side and, and a really in- interesting past emblem. Oh, the Rand Pigeons, Wayne, were very well renowned around the area. So uh, I said that uh, one of their past presidents, Roy Hamilton, I'm always a bit dirty about this, Roy, letting the Pigeon logo go. But anyway, they've decided to move on to bigger and better things. Yeah, they're giants these days, um, but the pigeon racing, there's some giants of that. We'll have a look at it a bit later. But I'll tell you what, there's uh, some good games from last week in senior footy. Osmond um, held out a credible ran, 6-15-51 to 4-4-28. Were you surprised at the low-scoring nature of this? And, and how did Rand, I guess, keep the league leaders to such a low score? Not sure about that. Probably if there's been a knock on Osmond this year, it's probably kicking a few goals. They've had a few of their better players out in the forwards. Uh, Armstrong and um, George Alexander have missed a few games. So, you know, kicking goals is probably their Achilles heel at the moment. Interesting round last round because pretty much every favourite won. So, you know, pretty much went to script for the first round for a long time. It did. But Daniel O'Connor, he was very good. And uh, McGrory was being really good in the second half of the year. Collins booted too. The only multiple for them. And Wardius a couple for the defeated um, Randwell Bunbury Waller. Clay Thomas, Kurt Jensen and Brian Leerski were their better players in a good effort. The Murray Magpies, good effort from them. Kicked six goals, 11. Billabong Crows did what they had to do to win this match. 19-9-123 over the Murray Magpies, 6-11. So it's a good win by the Crows. Good win by the Crows. I think we said last week this could have been a danger game. Uh, Magpies have um, played well, considering their personnel all year. And they've tried and they've uh, always battled on. Uh, the Crows have been up and down. But um, that, that, as it was said last week, this was a danger game. And if they were ever going to win one, this would have been it. But good win to the Crows. Yeah, George Sandrell, when he plays, he plays well. And Tim Austin, the veteran, Connor Hargrave's good. Nick Kelly booted six and Tim Austin five. Connor Hargrave's got three. It was Luke Brownlee with a couple and he was the best player along with Bailey Scott for the Magpies. And Carl Cairn took on Jindera. Jindera tried hard to keep their finals hopes alive and rely on some other results. That didn't help them, but it was a good win by them. 16-15 to Carl Cairn 9-6. Good win to Jindera. Um, they've climbed a few scalps the last few weeks, Cole Cairns, so they've been playing some good football at home. I thought this was a possibility they could have won there, but uh, Jindera are too strong, and uh, that was a good win by Jindera. And it was a big game for the forwards with uh, Lockie Noble, five goals out of his side's nine, and seven to big Trent Castles out of Jindera's 16, led the way on the field, uh, while it was a good performance by Holbrook. 18-9-117 to beat Henty, 9-5-59. Yeah, good win by Holbrook. So they got in front and just mowed it on. Uh, interesting, Luke Guest here comes back. I guess one of the, guess one of the best players. So uh, he's a big in for Holbrook. So uh, Holbrook have just... Uh, they've had a bit of a personnel change from last year. I was not a Holbrook fellow the other day and they were just saying, you know, the difference in Holbrook this year is a lot of these kids are sort of playing better and they've been... Um, it, it improved their game, so it's uh, you know Holbrook has done pretty well here. They have been the big second quarter where they kicked eight goals. Uh, really, was the difference between the sides. A good third quarter by Henty, where they added four goals to nil to win a quarter. And Shannon Turley had a good one there, four for him and Gestia, as you mentioned, back into the side seven and McKinlay four for the winners uh, on the day. And uh, it was a very big win to how long? Twelve, sixteen, eighty-eight. The best tipster is Phil Buffler. You went for them. I went for CDH, but you had home. They kicked three goals, 7.25. I put the Mozza on them, I think. You've jumped off Bar and Buddy and you've got on at the BB Saints and uh, you've jumped on the goes for you, Wayne. You've got the kids of death over there. So, uh, how long? That's a very good win heading into the finals. There's every chance they still boot at some stage. And um, uh, how long? Did they, they, they played very well. If they get those, someone said the other day, I was talking to another president, they just said, um, you know, how long could be a bit of a sleeper here? Uh, they've got a very good side and they just really, they've had a few out. If they could get their full side on the track, 
that that'd be a good side in the finals. Could be too. Jared Lane and ba- Baxter McFarland uh, and also Zach Mazzai with a couple apiece and uh, Kyle Do- he, Doherty a two goal haul. They just uh, didn't have the ability to uh, score and that's uh, something that they've been very good at in recent weeks, scoring big. So they just couldn't get it um, into their forward line this time around. While it was uh, Lockhart going down to Brock Barham, 15-13 to Lockhart, 7-8. Lockhart's um, the very slim finals hopes were killed off by the Saints in a good performance uh, at the Lockhart Oval. Yeah, we went into that game, saw a bit of that game. So uh, uh, Lockhart, um, you know, probably the big improves of the year, really, when you think about it, where they were last year. And uh, But Brock Barham, you know, they've been really improved during the year. When they started off slow, they lost all those games and uh, looked to be in a world of pain, and then they've just come along. So that playing, they've got some good young talent coming through. And, um, you know, that was a very good win at Lockhart. And as I said last week, they always play, doesn't matter where they are on the ladder. So always, it's always a good game. So that, to win like that, that's a very good win heading into the finals. It certainly is. Uh, and I'll tell you what, when you say there's some good young talent coming along, there's two of them. There's Keith with four and Max with two. They were two of the very good talents going around uh, for the uh, very improved De Brock Barham, who kicked six goals in the third quarter to dominate um, the over Lockhart, who had to chate Birkinshaw, Wiley Harrington and Luke Argus, their better players, with a coach kicking three. Tom Keogh and McDermott booting a couple of goals. That is a look at last week. It brings us to this week and the conundrums for the Hume Football League are fairly nil. It looks like it's going to be relegation um, into a regulation I should say in terms of the week. Osmond should beat CDHPU at the Canola Croppers Park. Oh, the Cropping Central, so I think I might have a look at that game. So uh, I'd like to see CDHPU. I haven't seen them play for a few weeks, so I'll be out to watch them. And um, yeah, look, it's a big ask going to Osmond at the best of time. So uh, CD HBU were disappointed. They'd be disappointed with last week's game and um, they'd be looking for improved performance. So um, it was a big good test for them. It's obviously the later leader, so they want to have a good test. And um, But at home, uh, Osmond will be too strong. Now, the big rivalries are here. The Billabong Crows at Oaklands take on Lockhart. And these two are not too far up the road from each other. They have a fair bit to do with each other in farming forums and so on. And who wins the footy? Well, you know, this is one of the games in the first round that Lockhart probably should have won. So, um, you know, there was a pre-order again that game. I'm sure that there's only a couple of points in it at the end, I think. So I think Lockhart will be... Um, I, I think just on the way the season's been, look, this could be a toss of the coin, Wayne, but I just think... Um, you know, where they've, had, they've played through the year, I think um, Lockhart would be just might sneak home. I think they might. Jinder will play Henty in a thrilling match of football. This will be a beauty between these two near neighbours. I think that at home, Jinder with Castles could castle a few and it could be all over for the Swampies. Yeah, I agree, Wayne. I think Jinder will be too strong in this game. Um, Henty played Dublin up and down like a lot of those clubs all year. And uh, it's self gender, really. There's a lot of games that room missing, um, uh, losing. So um, I just think, but I think, um, you know, given their performance last week, I just think gender will be too strong at home. Holbrook have near neighbours, Cull Can, to host. And uh, at those lovely club rooms, uh, I think the Green and Gold win. Green and Gold wins. Another uh, ex Barrel League grudge match and near neighbours. So there might be a lot of love lost between those two, these two sides. But uh, I just think Holbrook playing too good. They're just um, purring along. They're just going very nice to the whole book, so I think they'll be far too strong. How long should be our favourites against Ram Wabundry? These two sides are going to be finalists too. So uh, the Giants don't want to let another game slip. Um, they were good against Osmond last week. I'm, I'm not convinced that how long have got it all on the park just yet, but I think at home the Spiders get the favouritism. Home ground advantage will get how long home, I think. It's, um, they've been up and down a bit both these sides this year. And depending on, once again, mate, it depends on the personnel. There's two or three players missing. It makes a big hole in, in the side. So it's probably, um, uh, you know, it's happened to all teams during the year. But I just think uh, in this game, at home, how long will be too strong. And the final, Brock Barham will get a big score at Barham Buttock to uh, clean up the Murray Magpies. Uh, not a lot to say about this game. They were saying to be far too strong. And I tell you what, there's something I want to say if uh, there isn't a lot to say about local footy. There's a lot to say about pigeons. The fanciers will be out now. Phil, I asked you about this because you're an actual expert. You breed pigeons for racing. Now, I'm told that the longest race is done by the South Australians um, and that they put it together with a uh, Alice Springs to Adelaide homing pigeon race that takes two days to get the pigeons home. Uh, that's a, Well, Wayne, this is a funny sort of a topic because it's actually they're being released today, so... 
in the pigeon world, probably um, South Australia or Adelaide in particular is probably the capital of the uh, long distance racing in Australia. So this is the premium event for the year, if you like. So it's Alice Springs to um, Adelaide, which is uh, 1,320 kilometres. So uh, they've let the birds go. They take the birds up there. Now, the birds have got to be three and four year old. So they've got to have a lot of training and that sort of thing. They won't let the young birds enter the race. So they've got to be seasoned veterans to go up there. Yep. So I think at about uh, 40, I think there's 41 owners and there's 216 birds at two hours out of Alice Springs heading south as we speak. Oh, that's amazing. Phil, have you bred any of the birds that are racing in this race? No, not that I know of, Wayne. They've got um, very specific bloodlines to do that. The ones I have aren't really suited for this long distance thing. It's a bit like a horse race. You can't enter some sprinter or a middle distance type um, horse in the Melbourne Cup. So this is the sort of the Melbourne Cup of the pigeon world, really. Oh, it's fantastic to hear it. Uh, of course, the, uh, over there, uh, over the river, uh, is, uh, is it Yakandanda? They're uh, pigeons, I think, aren't they? Well, Yarrawonga. Yarrawonga, the Yarrawonga pigeons. They're there, yes, yes, they're the pigeons, but I'm um, not sure they get home from Alice Springs. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the Rand blokes probably wouldn't either, the old pigeons from the Rambo Bundry Waller days. Phil Buffler, good to talk pigeon racing. You uh, enjoy your footy at the weekend, watching uh, a very good local game out at the Canola Park at Osborne, and I'll look forward to talking to you next week as we get to finals action. Big weekend next weekend. Double head away with the final Saturday, Sunday, so we'll look forward to it. Thank you.